Hey everyone, it's uh, Professor Smith or Miss Smith, depending on who is watching this. I just want to preface that this video is for all types of students, whether you are watching this at the high school level or you're watching this at the college level and you just need to refresh yourself on how to do simple graphs in Google Sheets. So before I get into it, I'm going to show you a single line graph and then I'm going to show you a multiple line graph and what that looks like on Google Sheets, okay? All right, so let's start with a single line graph, okay? So just a friendly reminder, the difference between a bar graph and a line graph. A bar graph is when you're going to be looking at different categories or comparing different, um, different topics, different types, etc. Whereas a line graph, you're looking at data that is continuous, that is um, continu continuous in the sense of they're continuing on, whether it could be a decreasing or an increasing. So for example, our independent variable here, we is established that it is water levels, and we notice that we are increasing those water levels each time. We are continuously increasing those levels, okay? So I know that this right here, this information right here, based off of this, I'm using a line graph. With that being said, when you're setting up your data in sheets, what you want to do is follow the same procedure as if you would for a data table, right? So I know that for this side, the left side, right, I know that this is going to be my x, okay? Remember, your x-axis, right? This is my independent variable, all right? And then I know on the right-hand side, this is going to represent my y-axis or my dependent variable, all right? And it'll make sense why we're doing, why we're setting it up this way, okay? So let's say this, and remember, my independent data, this is the thing that I am deciding to do within my experiment. So for this experiment, let's say I decided to see what the height of a plant would be at, you know, at increasing levels. What is the effect of if I increase the levels of water? So when you are doing this as well, please also make sure to put your units. All right, so I already have my units within the title of what of my independent and my dependent. My numbers here will reflect that. And again, it'll make sense as I go ahead and graph it. Now that we've talked about how to set up our data table, let's go ahead and do the graph itself. So what you want to do is you want to highlight your information. And then here, you want to go up here where it says insert. You click on insert and it will show up a bunch of different things. When you are clicking on the different thing, when you are clicked on insert, you want to scroll down to chart. All right. Now, it, this is the same thing as just graph. So chart is just a representative of a graph. Okay. And so once you click that, it'll generate this information. Now notice how it generated my our, our graph for us, right? And you should figure out which type of graph you are using before plugging into Sheets or Excel. So that way, when it comes up, you know it'll look, you know your graph will basically look, look accurate. For some of us that may have seen this like double line situation where we're not clearly looking for two line graphs, we're just looking for the one. The reason being it could have been you're just setting up your data incorrectly, okay? So setting up your data correctly is crucial to getting a, a very accurate line graph, all right, or bar graph, depending on what kind of graph we're using. Now, obviously, right, we're going to go ahead and use a line graph. We have these scatter plots right here. So I want to change it to a line graph just to keep it consistent with what the video is on, okay? So if you're in Sheets, what you want to do is you're going to go ahead and click on the graph itself, and then these three little dots will be here in the corner of the graph. So you're going to click that, and you're going to click Edit Chart. 
Once you've clicked that chart, this information will pop up right here. So we went ahead, we want to go ahead and change this to a line graph, like we already said explicitly. Okay, so here when you are inputting, the cool thing about using sheets is that it will generate um, different suggestions for your graphing information. Okay, so we already know though, you want to know ahead of time, obviously, before you just start putting stuff in, okay, because that's kind of the point if you, you know, if you are, if you are basically analyzing the data correctly, you should be able to determine which type of graphing you're using if we're looking at quantitative data, of course. So we want to use a line graph because we want to keep it consistent. So I'm going to go ahead, click here, see how it says chart type. I'm going to click this open and I'm going to click the line graph. And again, we're using this just to keep it for consistency. All right. Now we have a line graph. And we want to double check our titles, okay, so water levels, good, and we also have our units. So let's say I want to change the information of my titles, or just add more to it, or maybe I forgot to go ahead and, you know, put my units, okay. So I can go here to customize, all right, and then what I want to do is, for my titles, I want to go to chart and axis titles, okay. So here are my different titles I can situate myself in, all right? So let's say I want to go ahead and change my x-axis title. So x-axis or horizontal axis is going to change that, okay? And let's say I just want to go ahead and spell out leaders, depending on who my viewer is for my graphing, okay? I can go ahead and edit that. Again, I can also go ahead and just leave it as is. Again, it's dependent upon how you want to do your graph. Okay, vertical axis is going to represent the y-axis or up and down. Okay, same thing if I want to go ahead and maybe actually name the plants. So let's say heights of um, almond plants, right? Again, depending on what it is, maybe you missed it or whatever, it's no big deal. You can go ahead and change that. All right. Now let's say I want to change my chart title. Okay, I want to change my chart title to an appropriate title. So, I can go ahead and do that. Okay. And then I want to make this darker as well. So, I'm going to go ahead and go to my text color and hit black. And that way, my, whoever is looking at it can clearly see it. Okay. You can also add a sentence underneath, right? So let's say I want to add a sentence, okay? Um, you could say, uh, and again, your sentence should be about the graph, okay? So for example, our sentence could be, um, again, measuring the height, measuring almond plant height based off of water levels of increasing water levels. And again, I want to go ahead and let's say I want to move my sentence below. I can go ahead and do that. And we want to go ahead and increase. And again, you could adjust your graph. Maybe I want to move this up a little bit just so that way it looks nice. Again, I want to change this to black. And maybe I want to go ahead and increase that font just a little bit. Ooh. Okay. And so let's say that I want that to be my sentence and I went ahead and moved it down. Here is my title. You can double click in on the graph itself too and change it that way as well. And let's say I want to go ahead and make this in the center so it's a clear title. All right, again, this customization is pretty neat. I'd highly recommend messing around with it just to see how your graph changes. Okay, now that we've talked about a line graph for just a single, single set, single line graph, let's go ahead and talk about multiple line graphs, okay? 
multiple line graphs in the sense of it's one graph with multiple lines on it, multiple lines in the sense. So for example, let's say that our independent variable, again, let's keep it, let's keep it the same as the other one. Our independent variable is still water levels. But now instead of just the almond tree, we went ahead and looked at two other trees. And we want to see those lines in comparison to the sense of the trend. All right. Now, I would still use a line graph. I'm not going to use a bar graph. Why am I not going to use a bar graph? I'm not going to use a bar graph because this information right here, right, we're still talking about the height. All right. The height in the sense of continuous data. Height is a continuous data. It can be increasing or decreasing, etc. Right? If I was just talking about, you know, if I were to separate this information and I was just comparing heights, just heights of the plant without taking into consideration the water levels, then I can go ahead and argue to use a bar graph because then I really am just looking at, you know, the average height. If I was looking at average height for each of these things, then I can justify using a bar graph, but I'm not looking at the averages. I want to look at this, this data, whether it's increasing or decreasing, etc. This data is continuous. The height of the plant's data is also continuous, all right? So please keep that in mind. So same thing, if you have multiple factors that you're looking at, right? So again, let's say we were looking at water levels increasing and then we want to look at how that affected almond trees. And we also wanted to look at how that affected plum trees. And we also wanted to look at how that affected cherry trees, right? Same rules apply. We wanna go ahead and keep this information, right? So this would be our x-axis, and this would be our y-axis. Again, we want to keep it consistent. x-axis is going to be on the left side, and all of this information right here is still going to be our y-axis, right? Height is going to be our y-axis, okay? Remember, water levels, we are deciding. We are deciding to increase the water levels. The height of the plant is the thing we are collecting or measuring, so that would be our dependent variable. Okay. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and highlight this information and we're going to go ahead, same thing, go up here, click insert, and we're going to click chart. Now, notice how it immediately gave us a bar graph. Again, we don't want a bar graph. We've already established that we wanted a line graph. We wanted a line graph for each of these. So what I need to do is, and again, let's say this didn't pop up. I want to click on my graph. I want to click the three dots and hit edit. Now, instead of ch column chart, because for some reason, I, I mean, I know why it's column chart, but it's still a type of bar graph in Google Sheets. But we're going to digress, and we want to, again, change this to line graph. So I'm going to do that. So I went ahead and changed it to line graph. And notice here now I have three separate lines. And it already generated for me a legend or a series, depending on what it is being called. Okay, so for Google Sheets, it's being called a series. In Google, uh, excuse me, in Excel, I believe this is called the legend. Again, it kind of gets confusing with the terminology, but it's just, again, a matter of practicing. So here, all of this information is established. Now, we have our x-axis showing, but we do not have our y-axis showing. We don't have the title for y-axis, and we don't have the units for the y-axis. So what do I need to do? I need to go ahead and go to Customize. I want to go ahead and click Chart and Axis Titles. And so what I need to do is I need to go ahead and change my vertical axis. Remember, vertical axis is up and down and is also known as our y-axis. Okay, so I need to change that. Height of plants. 
And again, we want to have our units, so in this case it was centimeters. Just want to make sure everything is good to go. And boom, there it is right there on the side. And again, you can go ahead and put your, excuse me, you want to go ahead and put your uh, summary, you want to put your sentence about the graph, also known as a caption. All right, and I want to go ahead and just darken that a little bit. And again, it's at your preference whether you want to go ahead and move your caption either below the graph or keep it above the graph. Again, it's dependent upon your instructor, your teacher, etc. And then, of course, you want to change that title, the title of your graph, because it's not very clear. Okay? So I hope this video has been helpful, at least in trying to configure for Google Sheets not only a line graph, but also a... Uh, multiple line graph. And then just so we're clear on why it's so important that this information isn't, you know, this information is kept in the correct location as far as for x-axis versus y-axis. Let's say we change this information. Let's say I moved this over here. And after moving that over there, look at what has happened to the graph. Look at what has changed. All right, all this information, this is, there's no water levels being indicated. All right. All right, look at this information. After I change it, it's not being changed. Now, what happens, let's say we didn't even have this at all. Let's say this didn't even exist. Let's say we just had our data all over the place, right? We had x-axis information here, et cetera, and so forth. If I went ahead and highlighted that information, right, I highlighted this information and I went ahead and clicked insert chart, right? We don't have any information, right? All of this is inconsistent, right? Same thing. And then it could even make matters even worse. Let's say I want to change this to a line graph. Now we have one, two, three. We have like five different lines going on. Again, we want to make sure our information is in the correct, and I want to preface this in the sense of how you set up your data table will determine how your graph will look like. Okay. So again, our x-axis we want on the left-hand side and our y-axis on the right-hand side. And if we have multiples that we're looking at, we want to go ahead and keep that information on the right-hand side. All right. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.